Hey there, and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete a very special 50th episode of our Mass Effect 2 Insanity walkthrough as we continue our journey through the Overlord DLC. In the last episode, we investigated a Cerberus facility that had gone off the grid, discovered that a rogue VI had taken over the facility, and was trying to upload its programming using the station's satellite dish. We managed to destroy that dish and met up with Dr. Gavin Archer, the last survivor of Project Overlord, the research project that brought the VI to life in the first place. Archer told us that in order to shut down the VI for good, we need to get to Atlas Station, but before we can get in, we need to disable the security lockdown in two other stations, Prometheus and Vulcan. And Vulcan Station is where we'll go in today's episode, so let's gather our squad and head out. Now, outside here on the landing pad, the power cell container that we already grabbed in the last episode has respawned, so we'll help ourselves to a refill and then hop into the hammerhead. Now, after briefly taking in the aesthetically pleasing view, we follow along with the arrow on screen, going below the stone bridge here. Enemy units nearby. Down here, we run into two heavy mechs who are guarding something very precious, but using rapid fire from the Hammerhead's main cannon and the target seeking capabilities of its projectiles, we can stay out of the mech's line of fire and decimate them before they get too close. And yes, despite sitting in a large vehicle, the mech's cannons could easily take us out. The hammerhead is really not all that tough and will go up in flames sooner than one might expect. Once both mechs are down, however, we can swoop in and collect the goods. An emergency Cerberus data packet has been recovered. It contains information on Project Overlord that other research cells need to review. Be alert for more packets in the area. Five more remain. So, we have just recovered the first of six Cerberus data packages, which are required for an achievement, and before we enter Vulcan Station, we can grab the second package as well. Another Cerberus data packet has been recovered. Four more remain. Alright, now for this mission we will once again bring Tali along, but we'll switch out Garrus for Morden. Once again, we won't spend any squad points as long as Morden has not completed his loyalty mission, and weapon-wise we won't change anything either and we'll go in with the Arc Projector as our heavy weapon. Using the hammerhead, we can quickly traverse the terrain and rush past the turret here. There is no need to take it out, as we can simply take a left and collect an iridium stash in this small cave. That's all we can find here, so let's go back, once again going past the turret and out into the next area. And here we have to jump from platform to platform, and as you can see, briefly touching the lava is fine, but prolonged exposure will destroy the hammerhead. On 
On the other side, we can once again use the steam vent to lift the vehicle up and then enter the small facility here. Our task inside is quite simple. There is another steam vent that we need to activate in order to be able to proceed with the hammerhead, and the controls are right here in this building. Before we can use them, however, we have to take out a trio of Loki mechs, all of them under the control of the Rogue VI, which is indicated by the faint green shimmer surrounding them. Since there's only three of them, they are quickly taken out, and we can proceed into the next room, gather some information, and activate the pressure valve. And there we go, the VI is obviously still watching us, but for now we have made some progress, so let's head back outside. Using the steam vent, we can jump to new heights and continue traversing the map, although not for long because another turret blocks the path and this time we have to take it out because there is something valuable right underneath it. And again, even though we are only going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one single turret, staying in cover and letting the Hammerhead's rockets find the target is the best course of action, otherwise we might get destroyed pretty quickly. Once the turret is down, we can move closer and collect another iridium deposit before we then continue down the path. The floating rock platforms return, but thankfully we also have to go downstream, so crossing over to the other side is not too difficult. Now here we have three options, using the steam vent on the right, proceeding straight ahead or climbing the rocky ledges to the left. And that's what we'll do first, although things are once again getting dangerous as we reach the top, because we are greeted by not one, but two turrets. And since we were already very careful engaging only one single turret, I don't think I have to mention that two can quickly cause severe problems for the Hammerhead. For that reason, we are employing a peek and shoot approach here, hovering above the ledge and firing away at the turrets only for a brief period of time, before dropping back down and allowing the Hammerhead's defenses to recover. That works very nicely, destroying the first turret after only a few moments, and interestingly enough, the second one sinks back down in its hole just a few seconds later. Normally this only happens if we move too far away, but as you can see, even after getting closer, the gun does not come back out, and we can collect the next batch of Iridium. A long jump then gets us across and onto the rocks here, no need for the steam vent at all, and here we can grab yet another pile of minerals. Now we're on to the next obstacle, the flowing rocks make one more appearance, and this time we have to go upstream, which is a little more challenging, but then again it's not too difficult either, and with a bit of patience we will be able to make it to the other side, and then into the main facility of Vulcan Station. So here we are, and just as a reminder, our task is to manually override the security lockdown, and for that we need to get to the station's control center. And pressure valves continue to be the theme of this mission, as we can shut off one steam vent here, giving us access to a data pad full of credits. 
Unfortunately, the walkway ahead does not really want to be used, so let's take a detour and blast open a different path. A medkit provides us with 100 additional credits, and now it's combat time. The first group of three Loki mechs here can easily be disposed of by letting another pressure valve take care of them, but the area ahead has a few more hostiles waiting, and we won't be able to let the environment handle them all. This is an interesting mix of shielded and armored enemies, with flying combat drones and more Loki mechs. Neither unit is really all that strong, but in larger numbers they can do a fair bit of damage. Now, there are two more pressure valves ahead of us that can be used to quickly get rid of a few drones, and if timed correctly, this can significantly shorten the fight if multiple enemies are taken out simultaneously. Once all enemies are down, we can collect what little ammunition we can find and then move up, up the pipes here and onto the walkway above. To the right, there is one more drop of ammunition, and since we're not quite finished with this mission, it's best to collect it. Afterwards, we can then investigate the room ahead of us, grab a few credits from the wall safe, and obtain additional information. Received an SOS from Atlas Station. Archer has declared a project emergency. We're trying to shut down the power generators to starve the VI, but it's already hacked our automated systems. I'm ordering my people to sabotage the plant any way they can. That would explain why the pressure valves are blowing out steam all over the place, as the facility personnel did their best to destroy the facility altogether. Moving on into the next area, we can open up the medical station on the wall here, and then switch over to the sniper rifle, as we have one more fight coming up. Another group of Loki Max occupies the area, and with the sniper we are able to take a good number of them out before they can get close. We also have two mechs on the right that we want to eliminate quickly before they can flank us, and thankfully we have Morden and his incinerate ability with us. All of this is only the beginning of the real fight, however, as we now have a heavy mech entering the area, accompanied by a few more assault drones. And while the mech looks like the most pressing target, it is actually better to take out all the other enemies first, otherwise it will be very hard to get a clear shot at the mech without receiving fire from multiple directions. The sniper rifle once again comes in handy here, as it makes quick work of the drones. Speaking of drones, with Tali we can deploy a combat drone of our own to distract the mech for a few seconds. It won't do any sort of noticeable damage, but it gives us a bit of breathing room. Once the mech's shields are down, we can once again employ Morden's services and incinerate its armor, before we switch back to the assault rifle and to infernal ammo ourselves. Another combat drone from Tali then turns the mech around, and that is all we need to go for the kill. Now, I almost forgot about it here, but there is another big pile of credits to be found over on the computer in the corner here, but that is all we need to collect before we can now make our way over to the last door of the mission. Shepard out. All right. 
right, and with a Renegade interrupt that did not actually give us Renegade points, we wrap up the second mission of the Overlord DLC. The security lockdown in Vulcan Station has been overridden and we have gained another 250 experience points as well as 9000 credits and 2000 units of Iridium. Now that's Vulcan Station completed and we will in fact save Prometheus Station for the next episode. Geographic conditions indicate an aesthetically pleasing view nearby. Organic life forms may wish to take note. However, before we wrap things up, let's grab a few more of those data packages that are scattered across the map. Scans indicate VI infection is present in nearby turrets. After a left turn coming out of Vulcan Station, we have reached another small outpost, but this time the data package cannot simply be collected, instead we have to fight off two more turrets first. And just like in the mission a few minutes ago, taking them on head first will likely result in a lovely explosion on our end, so we will move the hammerhead into a bit more of an advantageous position. From here we have a slight height advantage and can shoot down at the turrets, while the ledge in front of us blocks the turrets line of fire and keeps the vehicle safe. Once both turrets are down we can then swoop in and collect data package number 3. Alright, three more remain, but in today's video we will only grab two more, and the next one can be found if we simply follow the path here and stick to the left. Once again, we are greeted by two turrets, and also once again we can use the area's elevation to our advantage, but this time by staying below the turrets and using the small hill in front of us as cover. And despite me starting out by firing at the turret on the right, my advice would actually be to focus on the one on the left first, because once it is taken down, one of the container buildings of the small outpost here can actually be used as cover against the other turret. You can see though that it's not quite so easy to actually hit the targets with this approach, because despite our rocket's target seeking abilities, a good number of them do not actually land where they're supposed to. Still, eventually the first turret is taken down and now we can move in a little closer, take cover behind one of the containers and make quick work of the other one, all while getting a first-hand experience of just how fast the hammerhead can go up in flames. Now for the fifth and final data packet of this episode we will steer the hammerhead towards that rock window ahead of us, behind which we will find yet another guarded outpost. This time we will approach slowly and inch closer from behind that small rock pile, eventually activating the two turrets. If we stay close to the wall here and just peek out ever so slightly while firing away, we can take down the first turret without any problems, because for some reason it is not able to return fire. For the second turret we then move over to the other side of the facility and take cover behind this small ramp shaped construct here, which provides just enough cover for us to repeat the entire process one last time. There we are, turret down, let's collect the data packet. Another Cerberus data packet has been recovered. One more remains. Alright, and that's it. As we make our way over to Prometheus Station, we will now make the cut in today's episode. If you enjoyed it, then I would of course be happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe or support me over on Patreon. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.